Torta de Jody Queso, your new favorite sandwich. Hi everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Now, if you've never had a Jordi Queso Torta, you are really in for a treat. This is one of my favorite ones. You don't see it that much in the United States at places that make tortas, but it's very common in Mexico, especially in certain parts. Just think about this. So it's chorizo with melted cheese on a telera bun. Done in classic style, one side gets that bean spread, the other side gets mayonnaise, some pickled jalapenos, some avocado. What's not to like about that? Okay, let's start and make the chorizo part of this filling for the chori queso torta first. Okay, I've got a pan. Now, I'm working with a nonstick skillet here, and I highly recommend that you do the same. And I'm putting the chorizo in here um, just to help it start to cook. A little drizzle of oil in the pan is very useful. You'll hear that sort of crackle now start and it will help to render the fat that is in the chorizo out of it. Okay, so we're going to let that cook along there. I'm going to add a little bit of onion to it. So I'm gonna chop it into small pieces. All I could find was really huge onions. And this needs, well, about the equivalent of a very small onion. So I put a quarter of my really big one here. Okay. Cut up these little pieces on the side there. And there's a little piece of the root. Uh, now we're seeing this chorizo begin to render some of its fat. So put those, boy, it smells so good already. This is one of my favorite aromas in the kitchen is chorizo cooking. I know a lot of people say onions cooking in butter is one of their very favorite smells, but mine is onions cooking with chorizo. Okay, we're gonna let this cook. This is gonna take about eight to 10 minutes or so for that to cook. While that is cooking, um, I'm gonna take a can of beans, uh, black beans, and undrained, put it into a food processor. And then I'm just going to lock the top in place and pulse this until I get a smooth puree out of it. Now, depending on how much liquid there was in the can, um, I'm gonna show you what the texture of these is like. Um, okay, so that's easily spreadable. I put some water out here just in case I needed to add a little bit of, uh, of water to it. Taste it. This is beautiful because these were salted beans, but if you get the low salt kind, you're gonna to want to season it with a little bit of salt, but these are in really good shape right there. We're just gonna leave that set there. Now, let's talk about the Telera buns. Um, so we've got these beautiful homemade Telera buns. If you want the video on how to make homemade Teleras, I've got that for you too. So we've got the, the ones that are homemade here. Um, you can find them at pretty much any Mexican bakery for sure. Um, and we want to cut them in half. So um, start like that, about halfway down. And then I like to kind of go around the outside of it like that. And we want to cut all the way through this. So we have two sides that are even like that. Where these smell, these actually just came out of the oven and they smell really good as well. Okay, turn and cut through. The classic soft crumb telera bun. Um, these, uh, sometimes when you buy them in the Mexican groceries or in the Mexican bakeries, um, they'll be super, super light on the inside. I like ones that have a little more integrity to them. That's why I always recommend to people that they uh, make their own. If you've got the time to do it, it's a project that is well worth the effort. So I'm gonna slide these into an oven so that they can crisp. 
Looking at our chorizo here, it lacks just a little bit of time. I'm going to say probably it lacks about uh, three or four more minutes there. The garnishes that are going to go on this are um, some pickled jalapenos. That'll give it sort of that, that bite, that really wonderful uh, brightness that we'd be looking for here. I've got a little bit of mayonnaise that's going to go over one side of our telera. And then the avocado, we'll get that ready, but we won't scoop that out yet. Twist the two sides apart, get that pit out of there, and then uh, we've got that ready. I'll just put a spoon here so that we can take beautiful slices out of the avocado when we're ready. As soon as this chorizo begins to brown and is thoroughly cooked, we'll come back and we'll start melting the cheese into it. This is beautiful. It is done now. The little telera buns are toasted. They've become crisper and they're quite hot here. Um, so we'll slide this stuff over here. Now's the time to start adding the cheese to this. And the cheese is what we're working with here is the melting cheese that we work with in our restaurant, which is a beautifully made um, by an Amish family, um, kind of Colby Jack mix. That's what we like to call it. Um, and it's got so much rich flavor. Um, you could choose to work with a Colby or a Jack or a mild cheddar for this, something that will melt. In Mexico, I would go for a Chihuahua cheese or they have this um, Manchego cheese, they call it there. It's very different than the Spanish Manchego. Um, but it's a simple melting cheese. We're going to stir this until... Now, if your chorizo had uh, a lot of fat in it, you want to tip that off. You even want to take some paper towels and blot it. My chorizo that I'm working with here doesn't have um, much fat in it, so it's easy for me to go straight into doing this, melting the cheese right into it. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to just turn this off now. As soon as you see the cheese has melted and it begins to separate a little bit of the, the fat there, stop, but the pan will hold the heat here. Okay, if you were having a Jody queso in Mexico, it's likely that you would be at a place that does tortas a la plancha, or the ones that are done on big griddles. And so they would be crisping up the split telera directly on the griddle surface. They would be cooking the chorizo there. They would be melting the cheese into it, even crisping the cheese on the bottom. But what I've done for this recipe is to help you know how you're going to be able to accomplish this in your kitchen with the least amount of struggles. Let's just say that. And a second thing is this torta is too good for you to say, oh, I don't know where I would get a telera. Just choose a ciabatta or choose a demi baguette, a little something that is crusty and delicious and put this filling on the inside of it. You'll thank me later. Now, back to the recipe. And then we're going to take some of the this mixture or this bean puree and spread over one side of it and then we're going to take the mayonnaise and spread over the other side and set that down there and then a little bit on each one of these guys and spread that over that little creamy element is really i to me wonderful in this and it's the because it's mayonnaise it has a tanginess to it. Okay, we'll set that over there. I'm going to take some of the pickled jalapenos and put those down first. Again, brightness, a little bit of heat. Very lovely. Okay, now I'm going to switch to a spoon here for this and spoon some of our <laughs> gooey Chori queso mix on here. 
Now this is the point at which my mouth starts to water so much. I like to let the cheese get a little crispy on the bottom so you can scrape some of that up. But don't let it go so much that the cheese breaks and all the fat comes out of it. Look at that. Okay, now how about uh, a couple of slices of avocado on each one of these guys. And we're coming down the home stretch. There we go. Tops on. The best one I, of this I ever had was in the market in Uruapan, Michoacan, the avocado capital of the world. Let's set this guy over here. I like to serve with salsa, and for this one, definitely a salsa verde. We've got two beauties. Just take a look at those. 